I'm getting ready to build the heat sink that will drop down inside the cooling chamber. Cooling chamber. So the heat sink will be consist of this copper plate and these lengths of copper pipe, which will be soldered on like so. There's 12 of them. We'll solder on in a pattern that I've worked out on the computer to give me reasonable surface area, as in reasonable equal distance between the surface area and the drink. So I'm going to solder them on. Uh, and I'm preparing that job. Uh, just a quick note on how I cut this pipe up. I just went to B&Q and bought a length of copper pipe and one of these things. It's got a little carbide blade in there that cuts through. I think it's carbide. It's probably just steel, isn't it? That um, cuts the pipe. Uh, you've probably all seen these. They're really easy. You just throw the pipe in like so. Turn the thing around a few times and it leaves a really nice... So we focus on that, a really nice kind of rolled edge on the pipe that's got no particular, it's got a sight burr on the inside, but on the outside it's it's really smooth. Now in terms of, in, in order to solder this, I've bought some really good plumber's, solder, uh, plumber's flux to um, make sure the corrosion gets burned off this in the soldering process, but I want the solder joints to look as even as possible. So my plan is to make these little rings of solder and slide two rings on the end of each pipe and then position them. I'm going to make a, a, a spacer to hold the pipes at the, right, at the right spacing. Probably out of cardboard. I'll make two and they'll go up at the top. And then I'm going to heat the plate from the underside with a blowtorch, which should melt the flux and the solder. And by putting the rings on there, we get a controlled amount of solder in each joint. So I've got my copper pipe prepared for soldering now. What I've done is cut a notch in each, the top of each pipe. That's to let the air inside the pipe escape. Imagine this thing is soldered onto this plate. You can turn the whole thing upside down and lower it into that thermos. If there's nowhere for the air in these pipes to go, then they won't fill up with the liquid I'm trying to cool and it won't cool efficiently. So that's what that notch is for. I've also sandpapered the end clean to make the solder stick better. And I've deburred this end as well so that people don't cut themselves on it. I just did that with some sandpaper and a hand file. I mean, it took a while. I've also roughened that surface up a bit to get some, through some of the corrosion. The solder flux, this stuff, it's just plumber's flux. Uh, there you go. Which is the cheapest flux I could find on eBay. It will hopefully also help with that. These are just paper spaces I cut out that um, will hold the pipes in the right spacing. I just designed that spacing on Google SketchUp to be eh, close to equally spaced. So the paper holds them at the right distance from each other. They're all roughly the same length. I've made these solder rings that are covered already to go around the base of each pipe. So I'm going to flux this, put the solder rings on, and then we shall use a blowtorch to reflow the solder. All right, it's fluxed, both on the plate and on the end of each of these. And I've also slipped two solder rings over the end of each pipe, which has gone a bit further towards spacing them apart as well. Let's get it put on there. Placement's not really very critical because I'm going to move it. I'm going to cut the plate round anyway. So I just need to snug all those down, make sure all the pipes are actually in contact with the metalwork. And then I'm going to heat it from the underside with the blowtorch. So I was trying to think of the best way to hold this whilst I used the blowtorch, and then I thought, oh, I could use the hob. Hold it on the hob while I use the blowtorch, and then I realised, of course, the hob has its own built-in blowtorch that's a whole lot better than mine, so let's use that. Okay, so that's in place. It's under a burner. Let the burner lit. Let's see what happens. This hopefully should allow me to keep the process fairly well controlled. It's going to take a while for the heat to get through the copper and hot enough to melt the solder. 
and you can see it's melting the flux which will start to burn off and smoke oh you also see the copper go really shiny I may need to turn on the extractor which is quite noisy is being drawn up by surface tension to the areas where it's needed. That's good. I'm not sure how long this is going to take to be honest. Of course it's definitely activated. You can see the plates starting to go, show the oxide colours around the edges, the copper oxide colours, but in the middle where the flux is, it's staying absolutely shiny. Probably should have just coated the whole thing in flux before I started. Surprisingly, a little smoke so far. I'm sure that'll come. I hope my paper spacers don't uh, have difficulties. It's all getting hotter. Look at that black ring forming around the base of each pillar. It's a copper oxide. It can't be, it's right in the flux. Maybe it's just flux residue. Oh, there it goes, look. Solder's melting. You can see the rings of solder dropping. There it is, look, it's starting to form fillets around the base of each one. There goes more of them. There they go. Dropping down, yeah, that has worked so well. There's another one there that hasn't dropped yet. There it goes. Give it time to, to really bake. I think that'll do. It should start to solidify quite quickly. This is going through a cycle in the dishwasher before it's used as well. Give it a good scrub and then it'll go through the dishwasher. Alright, we'll let that cool down and come back when it's cool. It's ten minutes later and the thing is still too hot to touch, but I've got it sat in some warm soapy water. And let it soak in there for a couple of hours, that should hopefully get a lot of that flux residue. Then, once it's had a good soak, I'll give it a little scrub, and then it's going through the dishwasher. Nothing says professional like filming a computer screen. This is how I made the template. So. This is Google SketchUp, this is to scale. Um, I just drew a circle which represents the inner diameter of the thermos and then a circle that represents the thickness, the size of the copper tube. And I just started arranging them until I fit 12 in there in a pattern that seemed right. These ones are more or less in a straight line and so are these ones and these ones, but I ended up bulging this one, this one and this one and this yeah, these four out slightly from being in a perfectly straight lines on this corner so that I've got better coverage here and here. Now, there are algorithms out there for, for distributing coordinates evenly within a circle to get max to, to get these spaces absolutely equal or as equal as possible, but I really didn't feel like going down that rabbit hole and it was easier to just do it by eye, so that's what I did. Anyway... In SketchUp under View, you can turn on Parallel Projection. Um, I think. No, it's under Camera. Parallel Projection. So in Perspective Mode, this becomes a 3D object. It is 3D, slightly. Uh, and if we go Standard Views Top, 
camera parallel projection, what that does is flatten the image. So we're now getting a, non, a completely non-perspective view of the cross-section of the very top of this thing. Now I exported that as a 2D image and then imported it into this program from Matthias Wandel called Big Print. Uh, Big Print, uh, there's some artifacts in the colours, I'm not sure what went on there. Uh, I think this was a, a bug in SketchUp, or the, the old version of SketchUp that I'm running here, but this comes out onto Big Print. Um, as you can see, this is evaluation copy, which um, basically means when you try to print, this might take a while, this laptop's very old and very slow, you get that on your images. So I cheated slightly and just put it halfway between the pictures so that once I printed it, I could still see most of the circles and then fill in the extra one with a pen when I was done. So I printed those out, two of them, um, copied the, um, uh, I, I cut the circle out on a on some old greetings cards and stuck it on with double sided sticky tape and then used a scalpel to cut around the inner diameter of each of those circles and was able to then feed the copper pipes through them. So there's been a bit of a jump forward in time but I think you guys can see what I've done. I've cut a circle out of the copper plate on the top of these pipes now. Here is the plate as was, what's left of it. Um, you can see the circle cutting process wasn't much fun. I made a start with a little solid carbide milling cutter freehand, which was a terrible idea and then had another go with a hacksaw, and you can see how successful that was. Copper is really very difficult to cut. In the end, I went for using one of these Dremel rotary tools with the cut-off wheel attachment, which is also absolutely not the ideal tool, because you're trying to cut straight into a flat plate around a circle with a flat disc. But... As you can see, it worked reasonably well, although I did burn through three of these discs, which aren't cheap. Anyway, after that I used one of these sanding things to clean up the edges and get it nice and round and deburred. And then just as a first test, taped the heat exchange and Peltier on the top. Spot the deliberate mistake, put the Peltier in upside down, had to reverse the polarity. So this is about ready for a first test. Let's cool a beer. Alright, time for a demo. And um, because no YouTube electronics project will be complete without an Arduino, we have an Arduino, uh, I'm running this as a temperature sensor. I've got one of these DS something something, whatever they are. These things, DS18B20 two pound temperature sensors and some code that I found on github and modified slightly to make work pretty much threw this together in just in five minutes just to see what's going on so that's connected to the Arduino uh, we've got the serial port on the Arduino printing out the temperature of the sensor sensors plugged in doing a bit of a cheat I'm using IO pins as the power and ground so pin 2 is the ground being just written as a digital 0. Pin 4 is the power being written as a digital 1. The sensor draws so little current that the I.O. pins on the processor are capable of powering it. It needs a pull-up resistor on its output, which is what that little board is doing. So there's a tiny bit of perf board in there with a resistor between pin 3 and 4, 10k I think. And the whole thing's just heat shrinked with some sill header on there, which means I can just plug it in. So the actual sensor itself is in this jug of warm water, which is 36.25 degrees, and just very gradually cooling down uh, in ambient temperature. So, time to cool it with the beer cooler. Let's just see how we do. Trusty car battery ready to power the thing. So let's put 
the cooler in the drink. Not 100% ideal, I should probably cut a notch for the cable before I 3D print the lid. Let's make sure that the pipes are all sorted and how they should be. Put the power supply where it's going to stay cool. And what's left? I don't think that's just going to shoot across the room, so let's power it and see what happens. the return water. You can see that's flowing nicely. Should be keeping that cool. Power supply is on the fan again to stay cool. Fan's just up off the desk so we can get some airflow, not that it does very much. So we're off. So we're at 35.6. What I'll do is set you up for a time lapse. So you've probably just seen a time lapse of this thing running for about 15 minutes. It's pulled the temperature down by about 13 degrees in that time, from 30, I think it was on 33 or 34, oh, maybe it was higher than that, 36, something like that. But anyway, it's come down by over 10 degrees in that time. Not great performance, was hoping for better. You can see there is condensation forming here. That, that piece of copper is very cold. Some of it will be in contact down there in the water, though the vessel is only half full. It is working, but not especially well. The way I've got this wired at the moment isn't great. The voltage on the Peltier here is actually just paralleled with the voltage on the pump and the voltage on the fan. Now, it's only a 12 volt pump and a 12 volt fan. At the kind of performance I want out of this Peltier, I'm likely to be seeing 18, up to 18 volts across it. I've pumped it up to 14 and a half just to cheat a bit, but that's not great for the pump or the fan. So I'm going to stop the test here and switch it over to the wiring topology I plan to use in the final design. The pump and the fan will both run directly off the 12 volt battery. The red step up power supply will then step the voltage up to around about 20 volts. I might go a bit higher, I might go to 24. And then the step down module will then be running in constant current mode set for I'm going to start with 12 amps for the Peltier device, and I'll bring you back.